Hey everybody, Bug Eater back with another video. So this week I'm taking you along to a haunted and empty lot where an 1875 Italian 8 home was recently bulldozed. So the first few clips are from an hour long scouting trip that I took and then I took a full day to return back and really pick apart the spot. So there was a lot of awesome stuff to be found. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Well, I have moved on to a demolished house and uh, literally the first good find in this yard. <laughs> Look at that. That is an extremely pretty barber dime. That is in really good condition. I'm going to not rub this one and I'm gonna clean this up and I will loop you back in. Well, here it is all cleaned up and just look at the detail on that coin. That is incredible. Full Liberty 1912 is going to be the date. And I just cannot believe this. And uh, here's the back of that coin. Every last little bit of detail still left on all the uh, pieces of wheat and corn. S mint mark too. So that is a super cool find. I'll take it. So in the patch that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Do you see that? I see that. Look at that right on top of the ground. Didn't even have to dig for it. That right there is going to be an Indian head penny. 1882. That is a very old Indian. And let's get the back of that wiped and see what we have. And there's the one cent. This is going to be a really, really pretty one. But I will certainly take an Indian. So in the pouch that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Well, it's time for another surface find. Luckily, this was sitting on top of the ground because with that iron vac, I did never hurt it. However, that is going to be some sort of overalls button. Not 100% sure what that logo is, if there's even one. But it's a cool find either way. I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. This is literally a couple feet away from that button. Look what I just exposed right there on the surface. That appears to be a brass thimble of some sort. It is all kinds of mangled up, but still a thimble. So it's a cool find, I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. Well, this hit just like a copper penny and uh, look what just got flipped up right there. That is gonna be my second little silver of this lot. It's another barber. This one looks like it's dated 1914. That is insanity. No mint marks that I can see on the back of this one, but I'm gonna clean this up and I will loop you back in. Well, here it is all cleaned up. Not as pretty as the 1912 I dug earlier, but I will still take a barber dime all day, every day. But 1914 is gonna be the date on that one. No mint mark on the back, but I will certainly take it. So in the pouch that'll go, let's see if we get something else. Well, we got a shallow coin here. This one looks older. Hoping for at least a wheat. And yes, that is going to be a wheat penny without a doubt. There's the one cent on the back, and it is a very, very green one. So let's see what we can get for a date off of this one. That is going to be tough. That dirt is packed on hard, but I'm going to work this off camera, and I'll loop you back in. Well, here's that wheat penny all cleaned up. 1926 is going to be the date on it. So almost 100 years old there, but I will certainly take a wheat penny. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. So this came in. Like a, uh, like a zinc penny type signal. That appears to be a token maybe. Huh, I have no clue. Let me get that into the light for you. I see no cash value on this side and on this side, something. Oh, it's a car wash token, interesting. So probably not super old, like 70s maybe, but that's a cool find, I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So it looks like down here we got another find. That is going to be a key of some sort. And it looks like maybe it has an older look to it. And that is, uh, oh, that is interesting. It's got like a little uh, key character on it. And that definitely has an older patina to it. So let's see what the brand is on this one. Appears to be a coal national. Definitely looks vintage though. So I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So I'll just pull up this uh, penny here and it did not look like a memorial. And that is because that is going to be a Canadian penny. So newer Elizabeth, so definitely a modern Canadian penny, but still interesting. Let's see what we got for a date on it. 1968 it appears, so over 50 years old, so I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. Well, that's a little bit of deja vu. That is going to be another key, not very far from the last one. This one appears to be identical. Coal National again, and there's going to be the little uh, key man on the back there. So that is a cool find. I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. Well, this one was super shallow. That there's a coin and it looks like it's got an older look to it. And yeah, that is going to be my first wheat penny of today. 
Yeah, number two from this spot. Let's see if we got an older date on it. If I recall, the last one was a pretty old one. Huh. What does that say on it? Something? That is actually really tough. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit off camera and I will loop you back in. So it is definitely gonna be an older wheat penny. 1930 is gonna be the date on it. So I will take it. Let's see if we get something else. So this one was way down deep and I just pulled up this thing here and it's got some writing on it and it says universal something patent and it has a super green patina, super, super old. It's from uh, Cleveland. But I am guessing based on the teeth on the end here that this is a poker cheaters clasp. And this would date back to the late 1800s or so and it'd be used to hold uh, fake cuffs. So it's a very cool find, I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So this one was excessively deep down in the sidewall there. Uh, I think I know what this is and I see a date on it. And the reason I know is because I have one of these in my personal collection. Look at that. That is gonna be a uh, South Dakota Corn Palace commemorative token. The date on that, 1890. This is incredible. This is one of my favorite tokens in my collection. So digging one, I cannot, uh, I cannot explain how ecstatic I am to find this thing. There's the other side of it, 1890, and it has a name on it. Can't really read it all that well. But I will throw it up next to it, what it says. But this is incredible. I am absolutely thrilled with this. So in the pouch that'll go, let's see if we get something else. All right, so here's another look at that Sioux City uh, Corn Palace token all cleaned up again. It's for W.H. Beck, the Sioux City jeweler, dated 1890. And I believe this would have been worn as a pendant. But there it is on the back, Sioux City Corn Palace, 1890. But I will certainly take that. So in the pouch that'll go, let's see if we get something else. Well, it's looking like we got another coin, not very deep and super green, I believe. That is going to be a wheat penny, and yeah, that is exactly what that is. Possibly an older date on this one. Let's see what we got. That is crunchy, but I believe I see 1920. So over 100 years old, so I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So I just pulled up a nickel tone, and it appears we've got us another relic here. This is going to be a garter clip of some sort. And it's not uh, not too much, but it's still something old, so I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So I just pulled up an iffy nickel signal here, and I actually ended up with this, if I can get that into the light. It is a super fancy little button, and not sure, I think it's missing the shank, but I'm not sure what it went to, but it's a very cool find. It's definitely got some edge to it. So with the patch that'll go, let's see if we get something else. Well, it's time for another coin. I uh, absolutely nailed that one, and I can see exactly what it is already. That it's going to be an Indian head penny, looks like. Yep, there's the one cent on the back. So let's see what we got for a date on it. It's super green, aside from the uh, the nick from the shovel. It's like a date of 190 something. Get this a pantser of and see if we can reveal a little bit more. 1905, I think. Yeah, 1905. But that is a cool find. I will certainly take an Indian. So in the patch that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Well, it appears I've exposed yet another coin. I'm gonna see if I can see that. Yeah, that looks like an Indian to me if I zoom that in. So that is number two of these now for today. Let's see what we got on this one. It's like a date of 1900 on the dot, I believe. I do believe that is a 1900, maybe a 1906. 1906 it looks like, but that is a very pretty looking Indian. And here is the one cent on the back. But that is Indian number two for the day, so I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So this one was super deep, and it actually sounded just like a quarter. Looks like we've got some sort of a shank button here. And not 100% sure what's going to be on this one. In fact, it may actually be an iron shank button. So whatever's on here, probably long gone. But if I find any detail, I will loop you back in. If not, it's a great find. I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So right here, I dug up a bottle cap, had another high tone right next to it. Look at that. That I can tell you right now, with the way that's wiping, most definitely going to be a sterling silver ring. Let's see if I can get the dirt out of the inside, but wow. Oh, it's heavy too. So yeah, 100% gonna be sterling silver there. So I'm gonna clean this up on the inside and if I can get a back mark for you, I will loop you back in. So here's the ring all cleaned up. This is a super interesting one because it is most definitely sterling silver 
And on the inside, it's not even marked Sterling. However, it is marked E and E. So when I figure out what that back mark stands for, I will throw that up next to it. But this ring is super cool. It's definitely very, very old. So I will take it. Let's see if we get something else. Well, I just flipped up the dirt. Take a look at that right in the coin ball. You can already see the one cent in the wreath. That is going to be my third Indian head penny of the day. Let's see what we got for a date on this one. Ooh, it's a pretty one too. 1900 on the dot and a wow. That is a one clean wipe. There's the one cent on the back of that one, but I will take an Indian. So in the pouch that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. So I just popped another hole right next to where that Indian was. Take a look at that. That is another Indian making this my first ever Indian head penny spill. Two in the same hole. We got a date on this one of 190 something. Maybe that's 1891. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and I'll loop you back in. So here's just one more look at that Indian I'll clean up. 1891 is going to be the date on that one. And it is another super pretty, super, super green one. So I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So this hit in the upper 50s on the Amphibio. I flipped up the dirt. I see a pin sticking out of here. And I know exactly what kind of pin that's going to be. There's an eagle on the face. And it is for the JL Case Farm Equipment Company, I believe. It is Racine, Wisconsin. So that is a super cool piece of history. And this one actually has the pin on it. The other one I've dug did not have the pin intact. So I will certainly take that. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Well, this one wasn't all that deep. It was a kind of a crappy mid-tone, but look at that. I'm going to get that into the light so you can see it. But that is a suspender clip of some sort. But look at the fancy on that. That looks excessively old. Probably Victorian era, like late 1800s, early 1900s, if I had to guess. But it is a buckle or some sort of suspender clip or something like that. But it's a very cool find. I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. So I just pulled up this busted bit here. It has a lot of fancy on it. And actually, it looks a little bit similar in patina and uh, style to that little fancy clip I found earlier. So this may be part to the same little mechanism. But it's a cool find either way. Let's see if we get something else. So down here, this had Indian numbers. Looks a little bit green. And... Is that an Indian? I believe it is an Indian. Ooh, that is a crusty, crusty Indian. Wow. But there is the one cent on the back and the wreath. Huh, that is an awful condition. And the front is just covered in schmooze. Huh. I am not sure if I'm going to get a date off this one, but I'm going to try to work it and I'll loop you back in. Well, this is about the best time going to get it. 1883 or 1888 are my two best guesses. It's 1880 something. Last digit, though, is uh, not too visible. Here's the back of it, though. Back's in decent shape, but I will take an Indian. It's number five for today already, so in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Well, it appears I got something little and round looking back. I mean, actually, it's not feel like a coin. It feels like a button, and what is that on there? Let's get that into the light so you can see that just a little bit better. Oh, it's a little train. That's going to be an antique Carhartt button, so that is a super cool find. I will take it. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. So another interesting find here. It looks like a, a garter clip of some sort, and it says Bon something. It's got a lot of fancy on it, and that is a very cool find, so I'll take it. Let's see if we get something else. Well, this was another iffy nickel tone. It looks like I've got some sort of buckle-type contraption here. Actually, it feels like probably a suspender clip of some sort, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's got to be what it is, but whatever it is, it's definitely got some H to it, and it's a cool find. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. It is about that time again. Look at that. Indian number six for today. My record for a day is 10, so we're on pace. So there is the one cent in the back. Beautiful clean wipe on that one. Let's see what we got for a date on this one. Looks like another later one, 190 something. Looks like a date of 1901. Very beautiful patina on that coin, but I will certainly take an Indian. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. It's about that time again. Check out that surface find. <laughs> See if I can clear that out. It says P and K on it. It's a token of some sort. And it looks like a gambling token. So P and K on this side and on this side. It's probably going to say something like good for amusement only. And actually it says good for five cents in trade. So still definitely a gambling token. Pretty stereotypical one with the hole in the center. But I will certainly take that. So in the pouch that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. So for this one, I went way down deep, and I just popped out something super cool. Check out that. 
I have no clue what it goes to. It's just a flat piece of silver pl silver plated brass, like a decoration or something. It's got a couple of horses on it. So that is a very cool find. Definitely got some age to it. So let's see if we get something else. So this one came in just like an Indian. That is uh, not an Indian. I can tell you already from the square hole. That is gonna be a Chinese coin of some sort. I'll get that where you can see it. And no clue. I am not great at identifying these. So I am going to, uh, throw up next to this whatever this thing is but that is a very cool find and yeah there's the characters on it but I'll throw up the emperor next to it and I will take a Chinese coin so in the pouch that'll go let's see if we get something else so this one gave me Indian numbers yet again and that uh it's round and huh I have no clue what this is going to be maybe a token of some sort huh or maybe just some sort of fancy bit if I can get that cleaned up for you let's give this a pants rub maybe that'll bring out a little bit of detail but ooh, wow whatever this is it is super super fancy if I had to guess maybe a Victorian era button of some sort but that is a super cool find so in the pouch that'll go let's see if we get something else oh we got another green looking penny and actually let's see what we got here it is another Indian I was thinking this was gonna be a wheat as high as that hit and it is extremely crusty. And yeah, that is definitely gonna need to be worked off camera, but I'll clean this up and I'll loop you back in. Well, that looks a little bit better with all the dirt uh, rubbed away. 1907 is gonna be the date on it though. So that is Indian number seven for the day. So I'm absolutely ecstatic with that. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Well, the train is going by and uh, not very deep. Just plucked up that. Appears to be a lipstick tube of some sort. Is there a logo on the bottom? Not that I can see, but lipstick tube is a very cool find. So in the pouch, that'll go. Let's see if we get something else. Hey everybody, Bug Eater back with another wrap up from a marathon hunt at a bulldozed house. So the home was built in 1875 and it was sadly torn down to make way for some new apartment complexes, but there was a ton of cool stuff to be found. So on with the finds. I got this fancy brass bit. It's like a decorative plate with some horses. I also got into a fountain pen cap, lipstick tube, Three keys, one modern, and these two uh, Cole National keys with the little uh, key mascot. I also got a fancy piece of brass here. This thing says Pontiac and has a lead back. I also got onto a drawer pull. And then I also got onto a thimble as well. This is a super cool find. It's a poker cheaters clasp from Cleveland, Ohio. And the exact uh, thing that it says on here is the universal test clip patented sometime. I also got into a garter clip, another garter clip that says bond something. Then I got this little suspender buckle. These two are super cool. They're both to the same bit and they both have a lot of fancy on them. And then I also got onto a JL case hat pin. Uh, this is from Racing Wisconsin and to advertise farm equipment. And now onto the buttons, I got a big iron rivet. I also got onto this uh, Carhartt button with a train on it, little porcelain four hole and iron shank button. And then this is actually a clip to a cuff link. So this would have been a snap style popular in the 1920s. I also got a super fancy Victorian button. The shank on the back is missing on this one. Now onto the coins and tokens. I got a modern car wash token, a 1968 Canadian, three wheat pennies dated 1930, 1926, and 1920. One Chinese coin. Here's the back of that one. And then I also got onto this token here. It's a good for five cents in trade. And on the other side, it says P and K. This one is a gambling token dating back to the 30s or so. Now, under the Indian head pennies, I found seven in total, the most I've ever found since 2018. So the dates on these are 1907, 1906, 1905, 1901, 1900, 1891, 1886 on this crusty one, and the oldest is in 1882. My favorite token from the hunt is the Sioux City Corn Palace token from 1890, and then here's the back of that one. It says W.H. Beck, the Sioux City Jeweler. And again, 1890 is the date. I got onto two silver coins, uh, both Barber Dimes dated 1914 and a beautiful 1912. And then here's the backs of these coins. No mint on the 1914 and an S mint mark on the 1912. And then I even got onto one silver ring. It is massive. It is not marked Sterling or 925, but it has a back mark of E and E on the inside if you can see that. But that was my hunt, guys. Thanks again for coming along. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And this is Bug Eater, signing out.